Hey, this is that RC thing with a Dingo Kit Builder's Edition. Well, it's a kit, so it's a Builder's Edition. And currently it has stolen, I didn't get it, my uh, Traxxas waterproof servo for my Slash and my uh, Fly Sky um, receiver because uh, my Slash is currently broken and it's raining and my Slash isn't waterproof. But pretty soon I will most likely be getting the AM2 receiver from Axial and the 27 turn brushes, brushed motor um, from them as well for this. And this will be mainly like uh, um, winter and whenever my other truck is broken driving car. It's not very. It's not gonna be very fast, and it takes a lot of moving of the spur here to get the wheels to move. So it's definitely not gonna be going very fast. Um, moving on from the dingo, there's not much to talk about there. Uh, this is my slash in its current state. Uh, it doesn't have servo in it. It's in the dingo, and it doesn't have the receiver. Um, so I would uh, turn it on, but it doesn't have a receiver or a server in it, and it would just do full braking, which is full reverse, because it will recognize that there's no servo. Um, but otherwise, I have a steel 54 tooth um, spur gear. I have the t um, Mom Max Pro Short Course Track Edition ESC with the 2400 kV motor in it, and it runs off a if this didn't have duct tape all over it, it would be a hard case um, Dynamite Speed Pack 5250 um, 3S LiPo um, with a 50C d discharge rate. And I have uh, J Concept black Rolex wheels with Proline trenchers. Um, they're the ones with the um, really, like, I guess, coarse um, tread on it. Uh, this is the pinion gear I'm running, would be, this would be on the motor, if I can get it to focus. It's a 22 tooth, just a standard Traxxas pinion. Actually, I don't think it's Traxxas. Um, but because of the steel spur gear, it's made this very sharp and very hard to hold without cutting your fingers. And then this is uh, my previous spur gear. That's stripped, or not spur gear, pinion gear that's stripped um, because the shaft on the motor broke off completely. Um, this is a replacement motor. So I've gone through uh, an ESC that burnt up in August of 2011, and then I broke that one in November last year. Um, and then I didn't actually know. The ESC, I waited until summer to get replaced because it was just rainy and I didn't want to risk losing the warranty. Um, and then it actually took s seven days total to send out and get a new one of the motor, which is kind of insane how fast it took. But <clears throat> this is how it is right now, and that's very loose. Um, so the bearing in this rear hub carrier has blown out and left a massive amount of whatever was in it inside of the hub carrier and um, it's not good. And it actually kind of ruined the inner, where do you, hex, if you can see it, it's kind of destroyed in there. I have the um, STRC uh, metal hex for the all around for the axles. And I'm just running stock axles because I had CVDs, but they didn't really work. They would just fall apart constantly. The little rub screws that held in the uh, parts that go inside these would just fall out constantly. And then they rusted out and wasn't very, ugh, wasn't very good. Um, Right now, upgrade-wise, I have RPM bumpers, and I have taken off the front part 
of that one of the bumper that goes all the way across just because um, there's the screws were in the way of my Ford body down here that I got for Christmas. I don't know how my sister got it because it was out of production for a while. Um, but uh, training flame said to keep it in decent ish condition and it's sort of okay. It has a bit of matte with some green around it. Um, just to me, a gun metal with some silver. This silver was actually um, packed for paint from three years ago. I think it was like 2000, no, that's four years ago, 2009. It was really old and it's kind of like water now. It just runs. Um, in the front, I have the Traxxas aluminum steering knuckles. I have Proline power stroke shocks. I have the sway bar kit. I have uh, the RPM A-arms all around. And um, speaking of A-arms, actually, I did manage to break a rear A-arm. If I can get that to focus. Uh, no, it's not going to focus. Um, it was actually racing my friend's um, Nitro Firestorm. And um, I didn't realize how short the road was, and I forgot to break, or I didn't break in time, and so it went onto grass, flipped, and then the rear wheel caught on a, um, like a, uh, a, like, cement block, and it just ripped off, and it was just, it still drove, but it was just kind of dragging, limping like this, <laughs> and then the, um, the rear axle just fell off. Um... So in that was the left rear, and so now I have a two-wheel drive slash um, rear arm just modified to fit. Um, took a lot of sanding of part of the um, where it bolts on, or not bolts on, but the pin goes through. I had to sand down the edges a little bit to fit inside the bulkhead. Um, recently, I put. 100,000 100, weight oil into all the diffs. I have a center diff in the in the center. Um, and it's, it's helped a bit, but not much. It still slips a bit. I don't know how... I mean, the front feels like there's oil in it, but it just doesn't really do anything. Oh, now it does. But... It's worked a bit, but not much. Um, I have RPM Nerf bars, RPM um, body posts, and this one has the ride height adjuster in it. I have the rear power stroke shocks and the adjustable uh, height battery mount or clip-in thing because of how big this LiPo is. Um, that's about it, I think. Besides the RPM rear carriers, um, I'm pretty sure I'm missing something, but I'll just get on to the bodies. Um, a while back, I got the Flowtech for Christmas. It looks a lot better than this. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a picture of it somewhere when it was brand new, and I just finished painting it, but it's not doing too well considering the back half of where it goes on to just kind of broke off after a couple flips. Um, so it's it's not doing too well. But it held up for how thin it is, it held up pretty well against my fashion abilities. Um, I bought this a while ago, a really long time ago, before the flow tank and that backwards. Um, this one, I didn't realize I bought the racing one, so it's like really, really thin left in. I don't know how thin it is, but it's really thin. Um, and it didn't hold up very well at all. And the crappy paint job is because I got fluorescent paint instead of normal paint, and I didn't realize how like runny it could get if you did too uh, heavy of a coat, and it just ruined it. And then a bug landed in it, and I tried to wipe it out, and then it just made a massive smear so I gave up on painting it for a while and then I tried to do the thing where you get brake fluid and um, just wipe off the stuff but it was such a there were so many thin coats that it took forever and I just 
got bored of doing it, and so I just kind of left it for a while. Um, but then I just painted it black, and then just masked off these bits and just painted that green because I had some green. And it looks like crap, but it's a good bashing body. And it actually makes it so that when I go down a fire bridge that's near my friend's house, um, that it'll like kind of flip backward and grind on the back um, on the bumper, which has made it impossible to my abilities to be able to get the bumper, the back part of it off, because it's just grinded down. Yeah, it's just grinded down the screws. It's just not good. <laughs> I think I should have gotten the wheelie bar that mounts onto that. But I think that's it for my slash. Um, pretty sure I'm missing something. But it's, it's fun. It's fun when it works. It goes close to 55 ish, 60 if I can get it to go without flipping first it's very unstable at high speeds. Um, this this is the dingo body. I haven't I got these painted the little light bucket things to go in like that sort of. Um, I haven't figured out a way to get them in there, but this is all I did was for this one is just black. So it's just a very black car. Um, I did do some matte on the hood. And it came with a little Axial logo, so I just did that. And then that's gloss now, which is actually turned out much better than I thought it would. Um, it was actually really, really hard to be able to get the paint into the seats, um, or like anywhere really on the interior, because there's so much depth in it. Um, <clears throat> and it comes with the windshield, and I have put that on, and a lot of people are, but... It just looks better with the windshield on. Um, I have put uh, RC Sparks sticker, uh, RC Crawler, the Scale Builders Guild, which I'm not a part of, the PIAA, and the Axial Grenade kind of sticker. And I kind of messed up doing the front, um, like mounting the front fenders, because it rubs a lot if you flex the <clears throat> the, the the truck at all. Um, so it turned out pretty well actually. And a couple of little things I did was put a little tiny license plate. If I can get the glare to go away. Uh, put a little Washington license plate on it. And that's not a real license plate number, so you guys know. So it's not like it's mine or anybody else's. And then I put like a little. Um, jerry can on the back and that's about it um that's about it for the dingo really i'll probably be getting the esc and motor pretty soon maybe a month <laughs> uh it's pretty far out but um behind my house there's a creek that's perfect for this so it'll be fun because i don't have to walk far with it so it's kind of slow um i think that's it for my cars i've only been able to afford two and um, I'll probably make a trailer for the dingo to carry my slash so I can use both at once. Um, I'm going to get a second receiver for my slash because it's only seven bucks. And it's kind of ridiculously cheap. So I'll probably do that and then I'll just quickly bind them. Um, so yeah, I think that's it.